Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome to the beginning of my little mini-series on 3D optimization in Game Maker Studio 2. So optimization in 3D games in Game Maker is a pretty big subject. There's a lot that you can do to make your games run faster, there are a lot of things that can cause your game to run slowly, and there's far more to it than I really want to cover in a single video. So I'm going to be making a short-ish, probably about 5 to 10 part series on the different things that you can do to make your game run faster. Some of these things can improve performance dramatically, some of these things don't really improve performance dramatically, but are still worth addressing because of how they work and what's going on. And in some cases, uh, misconceptions that people have about 3D games and Game Maker. For example, there's this pervasive idea on, on, on the game dev parts of the internet that 3D and Game Maker is inherently slow compared to 2D and Game Maker or compared to other engines such as Unity or whatever. And while it is true that there are some things that you just can't do in Game Maker in 3D because of the, among other things, the very old graphics API and some other things, it's not really inherently slower as much as it just doesn't do much for you and doesn't do a lot to encourage you to do things that would make your game run faster. So when you're making games in 2D in Game Maker, the engine will do a lot in the background to make your game run faster and to um, optimize drawing and to batch things together so that you can let the GPU do the work for you. And for the most part, that's not something you really have to think about in 2D because the engine does it for you. Whereas in 3D, all of that falls on your shoulders. And finding the optimal way to draw things is suddenly up to you, the programmer, rather than the game engine. Fortunately, there's a lot that you can do, such as simply not drawing things if they're not on the screen, or combining meshes into a single vertex buffer, or using level of detail models so that you don't have to spend as much time processing things that are very far away from the camera. So I'm sure I don't have to tell most of you this, but anybody who spent more than about 5 seconds reading the Steam reviews for any given AAA game knows that a major factor in how well a game performs is not only the code that's running in the game itself, but also the hardware that it's running on. And if you think that it can be an absolute nightmare to standardize performance across different devices with different pieces of hardware inside them, you would be correct. And because it feels just kind of sort of a little bit disingenuous to talk about performance optimization on on a desktop PC with a, an i7-7700 and a GTX 1060. I have on my desk my old friend the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 4, for those of you who don't know, is a single board, one inch inch gigahertz, quad core ARM CPU with a little tiny graphics card that's just like integrated right into the motherboard. And as you can imagine, it's going to run into the limitations of, um, of performance much faster than this, uh, than this main computer that I'm using. And I'm going to be running most, if not all, of these demos on both the desktop computer here that I'm working on and also the Raspberry Pi 4 so that you can see the difference between uh, performance optimization strategies on different devices. As a side note, the Raspberry Pi 4 is also running Linux as its operating system instead of Windows 10, so if you're interested in cross-platform development, that could be a useful little exercise as well, but that's maybe a, a video for another day. So an overview of some of the terms that I'm going to be using frequently in this series. Uh, most of these... A lot of you have probably heard of before, but again, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. FPS is frames per second. That is the number of frames that the game is able to update and render and put on the screen in a single second. For the most part, you want this to be about 60. Uh, if there's one thing the internet loves, it's arguing about what the ideal frame rate for a video game is, but for the purpose of this series, we'll be assuming that we're going to try to target about 60. Just kidding. We're actually going to try and target just as, as many frames per second as possible, but the, uh, the established benchmark is going to be 60. Next, we have frame time and FPS real. These two are related. Frame time simply refers to the amount of time that it takes to update and render a single frame. If your game is running at 16 frames per second, uh, that means that your game is updating and rendering each frame in 1 60th of a second, which is 16.6 .6 milliseconds. Frame time and frames per second don't necessarily correspond because generally you'll be capping your, your frame rate at 60 frames per second or 90 or 120 or whatever the cool kids are doing these days. If you instead imagine that the frame rate of your computer was not constrained to the physical properties of your monitor, uh, and you wanted to know how many frames you could render if, if those physical limitations went away, you have FPS underscore real, which is a metric that GameMaker provides to you, the programmer, that you can do whatever you want with. FPS underscore real is literally just the inverse of frame time, so if it takes you 16 milliseconds to update and render a frame, your FPS real is going to be 60. If it takes you 5 milliseconds to update and render a frame, your FPS real is going to be 200. If it takes you a single millisecond to update and render each frame, your FPS real is going to be 1000. These statistics can be useful, uh, certainly, but sometimes people get the wrong idea about them and perhaps don't understand exactly what they are. 
High values for FPS real as reported by GameMaker are pretty meaningless. If you try to compile and run an empty project, you'll usually see it ping-ponging back and forth between about 5,000 and 10,000. And that means that it takes uh, between 0.2 and 0.1 milliseconds to, uh, to update and render each frame. And if you add just a little bit of game logic, then that number is going to skyrocket. And suddenly you are taking 0.5 milliseconds to update and render each frame, and your FPS reel has dropped to 2,000, which causes some people to panic when they see that drop. But do remember that that is a deceptively meaningless number. And a drop of 5,000 to 1,000 FPS underscore real is much, much less important than a drop between, like, say, 150 FPS real. Hey. Additionally, there's a little bit of of inaccuracy in the game in the way the game maker reports FPS real when it comes to GPU tasks. So if your game is very GPU heavy, which 3D games tend to be more so than 2D games, FPS real may be reported to be somewhat higher than than it actually is because game maker doesn't really take GPU time into account when it calculates that value. Just something to keep in mind. Next, uh, draw calls. This is just going to be vertex submit when you're doing 3D in game maker. Uh, a draw call is just going to be submitting a vertex buffer. A draw call is going to be when you're drawing a thing on the screen, which is a vertex buffer. In 2D, it's a little bit less straightforward and a little bit more nebulous because of the way the game maker batches stuff under the hood. But since this is a series dedicated to 3D games and game maker, uh, we are just going to be assuming that anytime that I say the word draw call, you can safely assume that I mean just a vertex submit. I'll try to just say that, but if I ever, uh, if I ever accidentally just say draw call, just that's what I mean. Next, texture swaps and vertex batches. If you've ever uh, turned on the debug overlay, which is this little colored ribbon at the top of the screen, and seen the numbers dancing around, the first one is obviously FPS underscore real. You can see that's bouncing somewhere around 400 or so um, here. And then there's two numbers in parentheses. There is a 7 and a 1006. The 7 refers to the number of texture swaps. I've done videos on texture pages in Game Maker in the past. Uh, the short version is a texture page is just a single graphical image that a bunch of different sprites or fonts or other graphical resources in your game are stored on. And they exist so that your computer can load multiple sprites into, into video memory at the same time and just use them without having to load them individually. And a texture swap simply refers to the act of changing the texture pages that you're trying to reference when you're trying to draw a sprite. So if you're trying to draw a sprite that lives on a different texture page than the last sprite that you drew, that will count as a texture swap. Note that not all texture swaps are created equal since Game Maker, since your computer doesn't always have to actually unload and reload a texture into memory, especially if it's a small sprite or a small texture page. If you have, for example, three gigabytes of video memory like this here, this here GTX 1060, then you have a fair amount of space to load as many sprites into, into, the, into the GPU's memory as you want, and you don't have to spend a lot of time unloading and reloading things. And in cases such as that, a texture swap will not be very expensive, whereas if you are perhaps trying to run a game on a Raspberry Pi and you have much less memory to play with, and you have to load and unload uh, sprite data frequently, then that could slow things down much more than it would than it would here. Vertex batches are similar. Uh, these tend to just pretty much be one per vertex submit, one per draw call when you're doing things in 3D. In 2D Game Maker, this number tends to be lower, and you can draw many, many things without having to do too many vertex swap, uh, vertex batches. A vertex batch is just any time a your computer sends um, vertex data to the GPU, and that could be a collection of batch sprite data, or that could be a, a single vertex buffer. In 3D and Game Maker, this tends to be one per vertex buffer, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it, other than simply trying to minimize the number of vertex buffers that you submit. If you're doing things in 2D and Game Maker, other things that can cause the vertex batch to be broken and have to be resubmitted and restarted are things that, like changing the draw color. Pretty much any time you invoke a function in GML uh, that starts with either draw set or GPU set, although there are a few exceptions, you would be uh, causing a vertex batch break. But again, in 3D and Game Maker, that's pretty much going to be just one per vertex submit anyway. Individually, a vertex batch break isn't that big of a deal, but in 3D and Game Maker, if you're going to be doing a lot of these, they can start to add up over time since, again, the more times you have to communicate between different parts of your computer hardware, such as the CPU and GPU, the slower your game is going to perform. Or I guess technically your RAM and GPU, but regardless, this tends to be the number one way that you can optimize 3D games is by minimizing the number of vertex submits that you have to do. Lastly, there is the matter of the debugger. And I, I talk about the debugger occasionally. I probably should just dedicate like several entire videos to just how the debugger works because it can be very useful. Uh, one thing that you'll find in it is this uh, this performance graph on the side. This can be handy. This gives you a um, uh, 
a, a bit of a history of your game's frame rate, both your average FPS and your instantaneous FPS um, real. It also shows you how much memory your game is using and the average memory that your game uses, which, uh, which can be handy to know. If you go into uh, debugger, windows, and then profile, this is possibly the most important tool that we are going to be using. Well, okay, maybe that's being a little bit dramatic, but uh, this is the profiler. The profiler is the, pro the profiler is very handy. Uh, what it does is if you click start profiling, it will keep track of how long individual parts of your code take to execute. And if I just l let this run for a couple of seconds to let the uh, to let the values average out and uh, click stop profiling, you will see that um, you have camera draw and that takes about 3.3 milliseconds to run which more or less checks out because that divide that by a thousand milliseconds and you have about 300 FPS real or so. Uh, camera draw 64 is the draw GUI event. There's not a lot going on there. You're just putting a couple strings of text on the screen for the, for the draw GUI event. And the player step event is basically handling input and, and making the player move when, when the mouse moves and stuff. Uh, if you expand these, you can see finer details about what each of these things contain. I don't believe I have any in this project, but if you were to have your own GML scripts that you call, um, you would be able to expand those as well and see what is inside those and how long each of those are taking to, to run. And you can see the way this breaks down. A matrix build is being called about a thousand times per frame. And in total, it's um, it takes about 0.4 of the 3.3 milliseconds per frame. A vertex submit is also being called about a thousand times per frame. And uh, likewise, it's also taking about 0.4 milliseconds per frame, matrix set, matrix build identity, and so on down the line. And this allows you to see what parts of your game are taking the most time to execute. This can be very handy. Um, when it comes to making your game run faster, it generally helps to make the parts of your game that are slowest um, faster, rather than taking the parts of your game that are already fast and making them run like lightning. And the profiler in the debugger uh, makes it much easier to, for you to see what parts of your game that happens to be. So if you, um, if you have a single operation, if you have a single function call that's taking up a lot of time, it allows you to pinpoint, pinpoint exactly where that is. As well as if you, uh, if you click this little drop down over here and go from top down to bottom up, uh, this, uh, this shows you the individual functions. So if you have many functions that are called in different parts of your code, and they add up to a lot. This allows you to see what that function might happen to be. Uh, for example, if you're calling um, matrix build and matrix set in a bunch of different places, this allows you to uh, to see how long it's taking those functions overall in your entire game. So this is the profiler. It's very useful. Okay. I think that is all the introductory stuff I wanted to go over. So If I look over at my notes on my other uh, on my other monitor, I think I've talked about everything that I want to in this introductory video. Some operations are obviously slower than others. I guess is worth pointing out. Um, in particular, matrix set tends to be slow uh, since it's got to do a couple things. Since it's got to do a couple operations internally, there are six different matrices that are that are available in in the shaders in the vertex shader, and every time you matrix set, you have to kind of update all of them. GPUs, it's always worth pointing out, like to do a lot of things in parallel, so a lot of the stuff that you're going to see in the series is going to revolve around um, batching stuff together. As I've mentioned, GameMaker, when, when you do 2D drawing, likes to do that for you, but a big part of 3D drawing is figuring out how to best do that yourself. Uh, GPUs are really good at doing, doing simple things really fast, and the more that you can lean on that, the better. Okay. So that's all I want to uh, that's all I want to talk about for now. I'm not going to be posting these 3D optimizations every week. I'm probably going to be scattering them around a little bit in between other videos, but I will be doing more on this soon. Uh, hopefully, if you've been following these videos and you've been making complicated games and they're not running well, uh, hopefully this will give you lots of ideas on what you can do about that. Good stuff. Until then, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this little demo project, look for a GitHub repository in the video description. Um, as the series progresses, there will be probably several. Although I might combine each of the individual repositories into one big one. So basically doing, doing what 3D optimization is all about in spirit as far as distributing files go. We'll see. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two of these videos a week.
uh, sometimes more. One of these tutorial tutorials and one Let's Make a Tower Defense game, which will also have a lot of 3D optimization uh, involved in the coming weeks, I'm sure. Anyway, I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.